To whoever this may impact, sometimes our lives have to be completely shaken up, changed, and rearranged to relocate is where we're really meant to be. Sometimes change feels like loss, transformation is scary, and sometimes to discover the best version of ourselves, we must let go of absolutely everything holding us down. Welcome to I Missed Me, your new safe space. I Missed Me's purpose is to help people all around the world to come back home to themselves. It is a healing self-growth podcast that encourages people to dive deep into their emotions, heal their traumas, and ultimately love themselves. My name is Mafia Sures, I am your host, and I hope to be a part of your healing journey. Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Gloria Jean, C. Aubrey Smith, Helen Parrish, and Frank Albertson in A Little Bit of Heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The elderly individual with the scythe is ready to cut another year from under our feet. That makes most of us feel a bit older. But age will give way to youth tomorrow night when the new year is born. So tonight, we get the jump on Father Time because the Lux Radio Theater is bustling with youth. The youthful spirits of 12-year-old Gloria Jean, of Helen Parrish, of Frank Albertson, and another who stayed young longer than any boy I know, C. Aubrey Smith who is now romping past the 25th milestone of his motion picture career. Our play is A Little Bit of Heaven, recently released nationally by Universal Pictures. It's a good title, especially for the Christmas season, and it's guaranteed because the songs of Gloria Jean are really A Little Bit of Heaven on Earth. Gloria went back home to Pennsylvania to spend Christmas with her family and friends, but she had to promise that she wouldn't forget us in the excitement of the holiday. And she kept that promise by showing up for the first rehearsal just about let her perfect in her part. In A Little Bit of Heaven, she plays a very young radio singer who becomes a star overnight. That's what actually happened to Gloria in pictures, so she knows whereof she acts, although she didn't have have quite the same complications in real life as in the play. In another leading role in this merry production is a star of many years standing, The star behind the scenes of the Lux Radio Theater, Lux Flakes. It's setting new records in popularity every day with Housewives. Week by week, year by year, its fan mail increases as more and more women discover its magic talents. And we we can't ask for any better evidence that we've got a winner. So if you're not acquainted with Lux Flakes yet, well, I suggest that's one way of starting the new year right. I'll even go out on a limb and predict that Lux Flakes will make your new year happier. Now for a little bit of heaven. We ring up the curtain on the first act of tonight's play, starring Gloria Jean as Midge, C. Aubrey Smith as Grandpa, Helen Parrish as Janet, and Frank Albertson as Bob. There's a music lesson in progress at the studio of Signor Antonio. He's the same senior Antonio, better known as Plain Tony, who runs a spaghetti house on New York's east side. And the studio is the tiny kitchen of his restaurant. The pupil with a crystal clear voice is Midge Loring, one of the neighborhood kids, a nightingale among the pots and pans. That's a nice image. It's a beautiful. Thanks, Tony. Well, I gotta go now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, hey, hey! What do you mean? You gotta take the lesson yet? Oh, I can't, Tony. I've gotta go round up all my uncles and tell them about Wednesday. Wednesday? Oh, Wednesday's gonna come. Oh, but Tony, it's the surprise party for Mom and Pop. Hmm? The whole family's gonna be there. Mom and Pop and Grandpa and Janet and Uncle Dan and Uncle Ed and Uncle Jack and Uncle Bert and Uncle Mike and... Oh, you got too many uncles. And I got to tell them all about it. All right, all right, but tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a long lesson, no? Sure, Tony. <laughs> sure. And when a party comes, I make a spaghetti a Tony. I close up the restaurant for the whole night, special for your Mom and Pops, eh? Oh, and that reminds me. I meant to ask you, Tony... Do you think you could afford to trust Janet for the party? Oh, oh, you sister, she lose her job again, no? Hmm? Yeah. 
A customer came into the store and bawled her out for something, and, well, you know Janet. She? She's a ball out the customer, I know. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. getting more like Grandpa every day. Anyway, she's out of a job. Well, that's all right. Sure, I'm going to trust her. But what she needs more as a job is a boyfriend. A fine fellow who's got a job, and who can buy her a nice little house, and then they can get married. There is a nothing so good like a marriage and kids, hmm? That's what Mom says. She says Janet ought to find someone compatible. Hmm? You, you think so, huh? What's compatible, Tony? Are you compatible? Oh, Mitch, of course not. I'm an American, and I'm going to stay American, please. Hey, Mitch! Mitch! Hello, Jerry. Come on out in the street. Big doings. Hurry up. What is it, an accident? No, a street broadcast. Broadcast in the streets? Yeah, they're asking everybody questions. Come on, Mitch. See you tomorrow, Tony. Goodbye. Hey, wait. Wait for the Tony. Hey, wait. Oh, that was marvelous, Mrs. Mitchell. No, no, now, don't go away. Just stay right here at the microphone, Mrs. Mitchell. I've got one more question for you. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Well, Mrs. Mitchell, will you complete the following quotation from the classics? Mary had a little... Uh... Mary had a little... Uh... Oh, now, don't tell me. Uh... Uh, no coaching, no coaching, please. Mary had a little... Uh... What do you eat with mint sauce? Huh? Oh, uh, uh... Oh, lamb! <laughs> Lamb it is. Fine, Mrs. Mitchell. Absolutely 100% perfect. <laughs> thank you very much, Mrs. Mitchell. What do you say, Cotton? Who's next? Right here, Bob. This is Mrs. Schultz. Ah, uh, thank you, Cotton. Ladies and gentlemen, my partner has just brought a very lovely lady to our microphone, Mrs. Schultz. Now, Mrs. Schultz, before we start, would you mind imitating a rooster? Why? Hmm? <laughs> Why should I imitate a rooster? Oh, no reason. No reason at all, but it's I... It's silly. Well, yes, it it's is. It's ridiculous. But... I wouldn't do it. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Mrs. Schultz. Now, uh, surely someone feels the urge to crow. Who will it be? I can do it, mister. Well, that's the girl. Go right ahead. <laughs> very good, very good. Straight from the barnyard. Uh, what's your name, young lady? Mitch Loring. What's yours? Bob Cayley. Oh, but we're not here to talk about me. Suppose you tell us something about yourself. Well, I live up there across the street on the second floor. There's quite a lot of them. There's Mom and Pop and Grandpa and Uncle Dan. And I've got other uncles, too, such as... Dan, Ed, Jack, Bert, Mike, West, Ferris, Pete, Louie, Freddie, and Sherm. And a very pretty sister who's out of a job right now. Oh, and I sing besides. <laughs> what a family and what a memory. Oh, I haven't even started to tell you about my uncles. They've all got uniforms. That is all except Uncle Dan. He sells things. Uh, what things? Anything. Only he's out of a job, too. <laughs> my Uncle Ed's a lion tamer in the circus. Uncle Jack's a cop. Uncle Sherm's a street cleaner. Oh, I mean a department of sanitation man. Uncle Pete's a prison guard. Uncle Pat's a captain on a barge. And Uncle... Whoa, Mark... whoa, I think that gives us a pretty good idea. And now, suppose you sing for us. You mean sing into this thing here? Why, that's not a thing, young lady. That's a microphone. <laughs> Please, sing a song. Well, okay. Tony, play for me, will you? Oh, sure, sure, I play. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Miss Midge Loring, the young lady with the uncles. We're marching along with a smile and a song And a cheer loud and clear for the penguins We're loyal and true in whatever we do Oh, it's fun to be one of the penguins Let us sing on our merry, merry way Let us sing, la, la, la To a happy holiday Let us cheer, la, la, la To the sun that shines us all And a cheer, la, la, la To every penguin that we know Well, thank you very much. Well, that's all right, but I've got to go now and see my uncle. Bye. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Don't go. Hey, Cotton, grab that girl. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> but, but where are we going? What are we going to do? Young lady, we're going to make you famous, aren't we, Cotton? I'll say we are. And there's nothing to be nervous about, not a thing. Oh, I'm not nervous. Of course not. Harrington's a great guy, isn't he, Cotton? Yeah, he'll love you. He loves everybody. Who's Mr. Harrington? Oh, he's our boss. One of the nicest fellows you'd ever want to meet. Huh, Cotton? Inside and out, he's a prince. A prince. Well, here we are. Hi, Miss Brown. Hello. Say, is the old walrus busy? Go right in. He's waiting for you. Fine. Now, you folks sit right down here, and I'll get this thing all set. Oh, Bob, don't you think you need me? What for? Kaylee never misses. See you in two minutes. 
Well, Chief, how are you? Did you hear the broadcast? Yep. Great, huh? Yep. You're fired. Finished. Get out. What? Oh, but that, that girl, that boy. Grab that girl. She's a sweetheart. Did anyone ever tell you this is a quiz program? Last Tuesday, you broadcast a cat and dog fight. Oh, but this is... Yes? Mr. Dixon wants to talk to you. Tell him I'm out to lunch. Tell him I'm in jail. You hear that? The sponsor. Day before yesterday, a woman talked about her operation for 13 minutes. But, Mr... What is it? Mr. Dixon says it's of the utmost importance. Tell him I'm taking a nap. Tell him I'll be back Thursday. Another account out the window. Grab that girl. She's a sweetheart. Making dates on our time. Now, just a minute, Mr. Harrington. At the risk of losing my job. At the risk of losing what job? You haven't got a job. What is it? He won't take no for an answer. All right, put him on. Now, listen, Mr. You shut up. Hello. Uh, oh, hello, Mr. Dixon. Say, I'm mighty sorry about that program today. It was all a mistake. One of my men... Huh? Oh, you did? Oh, oh, well, certainly, that's the way we planned it. Oh, we did, huh? Why, of course, Mr. Dixon, we're just trying to keep her undercover. You never catch me with my pants. You never catch me with the grass growing under my feet. Never mind that stuff. I want to quiet, tell you... Quiet, quiet. All right, Mr. Dixon, I'll call you as soon as it's all settled. Say about lunchtime tomorrow? Fine. Goodbye. He likes her. He wants her on his show. Where is she? Don't look at me. I don't work here anymore. Now, Bob, now, Bob, don't be hasty. Trouble with you is you're always flying off the handle. Why should you want to quit at a time like this? Quit? You fired That's me. That's beside the point. Where's that girl? All right, Mr. Harrington. Maybe we can talk terms. Terms? What do you mean, terms? Well, you've got the sponsor. We've got the girl. I'll call you up when it's all settled. Say, about lunchtime tomorrow. Oh, wait, Bob! So long, Mr. Harrington. Come back here. Come back well, Bob, what did he say? It's all said. He wants her. The sponsor wants her. She's in. Oh, swell. Midge, we're going to make your name a household word. You mean singing on the radio? A coaster coast hookup. Fame and fortune. Your picture in the fan magazine. I can see it now. Midge Loring, the dead-end diva. What do you think of it, Midge? We'll have to ask the family. The... the family? The whole family? Uncles included? No, just Mom and Pop and Sis and Uncle Dan and Grandpa. But Grandpa's the real boss. Whenever something makes him mad, he starts breaking canes over the furniture. Oh, well, does he break many of them? Two or three a week. Uh-oh. Cotton, prepare to meet Grandpa. No, 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 no. I've said my granddaughter's not going to do it, and that's all there is to it. But for the love of Jezebel, did a little extra income ever hurt anyone? Yes, it's like trying to cage a nightingale or a lark. They stop singing. How about canaries? Oh, bosh. Look, we'll leave it to the family. Mr. Loring, you're Midge's father. What do you think? Well, personally, I think that It we should... doesn't matter what he thinks. He's only got into this family by marriage. What about me? I was born into it. Nobody asked my opinion. Nobody wants it. This is my Uncle Dan. Oh, how do you do? Hi. Now, look. I understand you're a businessman. Sure, when I work... Then you ought to see the possibilities of this thing. Think of it, a hundred bucks a week. You said two hundred. Who did? You did. I did not. I... Cotton, don't argue. All right, it's two hundred. Mrs. Loring, let me ask you. Yes? Mrs. Loring, wouldn't you like to have a nice, shiny dishwashing machine? Think of it. You put the dishes in, turn the switch, and relax. It sounds nice to me. Don't you think so, Grandpa? For the last time, as long as I'm head of this family, the answer is no. Well, when can we know definitely? Here, somebody hand these young pups their hats and get them out of here before I lose my temper. I've had all I can stand. Good night. Well, now you've met Grandpa. Yeah. Meeting Grandpa's like shaking hands with a buzzsaw. Well... Goodbye, folks. Goodbye. So long, boys. Better luck next time, gentlemen. Yeah, maybe if we... Hello, family. Oh, Janet, come here. Dinner ready, Mom? I brought some of those pickles that Pop likes. Oh, company? Hello. Uh, Janet, this is Bob, Bob Cayley. Bob, this is Janet, my sister. And this is Cotton, Cotton Bates. How do you do? Hello. They heard me sing and asked me a lot of questions, and they took me down to the office, and it was all fixed, and now... Hey, now, wait a minute, Midge. What's this all about? It's about me singing on the radio. Why, Midge, that's wonderful. Well, I'll say it is, for $300 a week. $300? $300. But I just said... $300. $300. Take it or leave it. Oh, now, listen. Forget it, Cotton. $300. Okay. We haven't got her anyhow. Well, what happened? Grandpa said no. Oh. He was pretty positive, too. And how? He almost wrecked the jerk. What did he do? He broke his cane. Uh-oh. That sounds bad. Very bad. Janet, you've got to do something. You've got to talk to him. Well, honey, I'll try, but gosh, in this house, man proposes, grandpa disposes. Oh, uh, look, Miss Loring, I'm not trying to cage larks and nightingales. I'm not a crook and I'm not crazy. I'm just trying to put Midge on the air where she can make a lot of money. 
Now, do you see anything wrong with that? No, it sounds perfect to me. Well, can't we do something with that old, uh, with Grandpa? I'd like to help, but when he starts breaking canes, I don't know how to approach him. For the love of Jezebel, there must be some way. Uh, look here, Miss Loring, why can't you and I, uh, well, what I mean is, it's, it's been swell meeting you and all that, but uh, I, I'd like to see you again soon. And while some people don't care for nightclubs, other people often find them very enjoyable. Maybe you Wait could, a minute. Uh, now, what's this all about? Well, I've got two tickets for the opening of the Martinique tonight. Can you be ready at nine? Why, I don't know. How about it, family? Yes. yes. Gee, I'll bet Janet's having a swell time. Think so, Grandpa? Huh? He was a nice fellow, wasn't he? Mr. Cayley, I mean. Oh. Are we going to have that game of checkers, uh, ain't we? Oh, all right. Grandpa, how does a dishwashing machine work? Well, it works by electricity. You put the dishes in, you turn it on, and that's all there is. And the dishes don't break? No. Gee, that's wonderful. Too bad we don't have one. Huh? You know, Grandpa, I love to sing. Ah, and we love to hear you. I bet you if I sang loud enough, they could hear me maybe two blocks away, huh? I suppose so. And if you could sing loud enough to have people hear you maybe a thousand miles away in Chicago or Iowa or, gosh, maybe even Africa, that'd really be something, wouldn't it? Well, it certainly would. And if they wanted to pay you for, so, for instance, we could get a dishwashing machine and, and Pop could get a new suit and we could have all sorts of nice ah, things. Ah, listen here, young lady. There's no need for you to bother your head about that. At your age, you ought to be having fun and getting educated. How long does it take to get educated? Well, it starts the day you're born and stops the day you die. Hmm. Kind of keeps you busy, doesn't it? The important thing is to find happiness and hold on to it. If you don't find it by just having nice new things. Here, let me tell you a story. Okay, Grandpa. Once there was a prince that was very sick, and the doctor said the only thing to cure him would be to find a happy man and buy his shirt and wear it. The prince searched and searched and searched, but he couldn't find a single happy man. One day, when he was just about to give up in defeat, he passed a field and saw the farmer plowing. And the man was singing, singing at the top of his lungs. Why are you singing, said the prince. Because I'm happy, said the farmer. Let me buy your shirt. I'll pay you anything you like for it, said the prince. I'm sorry, said the farmer, but I haven't got a shirt. There you are. Don't you like it? It's okay. Just the same, I wish we had that dishwashing machine. Janet, is that you? Hello, Midge. I didn't mean to wake you up. Oh, that's all right. Oh, he gave you flowers, huh? Mm-hmm. Gee, he must be nice. Oh, yes, he's swell. Unzip me, will you? Is he a good dancer? Oh, marvelous. Then you had a good time, huh? Wonderful. First we went to the Colony Club for dinner, and from there we went to the Martinique, and then we went to some little place. I've forgotten the name of it. Why are you in there? There he goes again, always stopping everybody. Why, Midge, what's the matter? Oh, he won't buy a dishwashing machine. I have to get educated from the day I'm born till the day I die. I can't sing on the radio just because some old guy out in the field hasn't got a shirt. Oh, darling, don't get so upset about oh, it. Oh, but I want to do it, Janet, more than anything I ever wanted. You really want to? Oh, yes. All right, dear, but don't worry about it now. Go to sleep. I'll talk to Grandpa about it tomorrow. Yeah, maybe one word lead to another. We'll see. Good night. Good night. Oh, Janet. Yes? Would you say offhand like that Mr. Cayley was compatible? Why, yes, I guess so. Why? Oh, nothing. Good night. And so the curtain falls on Act One of A Little Bit of Heaven, starring Gloria Jean, C. Aubrey Smith, Helen Parrish, and Frank Albertson. Now for one of our old-time American tunes, played by Lou Silvers in our orchestra. Thank you, Lou, for the haunting strains of Carry Me Back to Old Virginia. You know, I asked Lou to play that because I have some news from Virginia from its beautiful capital city, Richmond. 
That was one of the places where a survey was made not so long ago, a part of a nationwide search for information. Women in Richmond, as in other cities from Boston to San Francisco, were asked just how they cared for their nice things. And when all the results from all the cities were added up... The answer was two to one for Lux Flakes. Right, Sally. All over the country, it's two to one for new Quick Lux. Twice as many women use Lux Flakes for stockings, underthings, sweaters, and so on, as use any other flakes, chips, or beads. Well, you must admit we women are bright, Mr. Ruick. Well, I always admit that, Sally. But seriously, it's true that there are very good reasons why American women prefer Lux for their nice things. Well, new Quick Lux is so much faster. Yes, in water as cool as your hand, it dissolves three times as fast as any of the ten other leading soaps tested. It goes further, too. Right again, Sally. New Quick Lux Flakes give more suds, ounce for ounce, than any of these other soaps, even in hard water. And, of course, it's so safe. Safe for anything safe in water. For your nice things and your everyday washables, too. Yes, it's faster, goes further, and it's wonderfully gentle. No wonder it's new Quick Lux Flakes two to one among women all over the USA. Now remember, it comes in the same familiar package, and it costs you no more. Now, our producer, Mr. DeBille. Act two of A Little Bit of Heaven, starring Gloria Jean as Midge, C. Aubrey Smith as Grandpa, Helen Parrish as Janet, and Frank Albertson as Bob. <laughs> Fame and fortune stood on the Loring threshold, and Grandpa slammed the door. But the family pressure proved too much for him, and Grandpa finally had to give in. Now the family has come to talk terms in Mr. Harrington's office. Copies of the contract have been handed to Midge, Mom, Pop, Janet, and Uncle Dan. The Lorings work strictly as a unit. Well, folks, you ready to sign? Oh, give them a chance, Mr. Harrington. They're still reading it. How's it look, Midge? Am I the party of the second part? That's right. Hmm. How's it by you, Dan? I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in here that don't make sense. Comp mentis, nunc pro tunk. It ain't even American. It sounds like they're taking my little girl away from me. Oh, no, no, Mrs. Loring. Say, what's this thing here? What's that, Mr. Loring? It says here that she gets paid on Wednesdays. Why not Saturday? Well, the checks are made out on Tuesday and delivered on Wednesday. Why? Why not pay her on Saturday? Don't give it a second thought. That clause doesn't mean a thing. If it doesn't mean a thing, why is it in here? Because a contract's a mutual agreement. A promise... Yeah, to... but it looks to me like the party of the second part is doing all the promises. All our contracts have the same promises. I still don't get this about being paid on Wednesday. Now, listen. Easy, I... Mr. Harrington, easy. Now, believe me, Mr. Loring, there's nothing to worry about. Just sign the contract and we're all set. Now, don't rush me. Don't rush me. Yeah, after all, this is an important step we're taking. Yeah, what's the matter with Saturday? There's nothing the matter with Saturday. But everybody gets paid on Saturday. It looks like a loophole to me. I think we ought to get some legal advice from Uncle Pete. Uncle Pete? Who's he? He's a prison guard. A prison guard? I... All right, all right, she gets paid on Saturday. Uh, now you're talking my language. And now will you sign the contract? Go on, Pop, take the plunge. All right. Fine, fine. Uh, there you are, sir. Thank you. This is the happiest day of my life. Yeah, I won't have to work either. Well, that's <laughs> all, folks. Hope you'll all be very happy. Now, Midge, I'll expect you back at 5 o'clock for rehearsal. 5 o'clock? Oh, but today is Wednesday. I thought we'd settled all that. Mr. Harrington, I don't think you understand. I know I don't. Mom, Pop, will you go outside for a minute? What for? Oh, go ahead, Pop, please. All right. Come on, Mama. Don't sign anything, dear. You see, Mr. Harrington, today's Wednesday. You said that. Well, I'm giving a surprise party for Mom and Pop. Go on. Well, Tony's got everything ready, see? I see. And after all, you wouldn't want me to disappoint all my uncles, would you? Oh, no, no. What's a rehearsal compared with a lot of uncles? Now you're talking. Yeah, ooh. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. Please, everybody, quiet, please, quiet, eh? Hey, quiet, quiet, eh? Hey? <laughs> thank you, thank you. And now, and now my beautiful little pupil, she's going to sing. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> So 
they dotted it with silver to make its lake sober. And now we're going to have a speech from Grandpa, eh? Well, all I want to say is that I think we ought to take time and give thanks that we're all here enjoying the rarest thing in life, happiness. We are happy because we bear no grudge against any man. What's his is his, and what's ours is ours. We've been jogging along day after day and year after year without needing any help or interference. We've been pretty self-sufficient. It's, it's nice to think that we've made a little bit of heaven for ourselves and, and let's hope that we, that we stay that way and... Uh, oh, get on with your tomfoolery. <laughs> Mr. Harrington, who haven't you met yet? Well, I, I've met so many people. Oh, Uncle Pat. Uncle Pat, this is Mr. Harrington. Hi. How do you do? Uncle Pat's a barge captain. Is that so? That's right. Sixteen years a seagoing man. One price between Hoboken and Staten Island. And this is Uncle Ed. Hi. How do you do? Uncle Ed works in the circus. Yeah, line taming's my dodge. I take care of Leo the line. One of the finest specimens in the world. Got a head five feet around. Very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, and this is my Uncle Pete, the prison guard. Oh, the legal advisor. Hi. Hi. <laughs> well, is that all of them? Let's see. Dan, Ed, Bert, Mike, Wes, Francis, Pete, Louie, Freddy, Sherman. What about the one you said was a deep sea diver? Oh, Uncle Walt? Oh, he hasn't come up yet. <laughs> and this is Uncle Jack. He's a traffic cop. Hi. Hi. Well, I guess that's all. Have a good time, Mr. Harrington. Yeah. Say, Mr. Harrington, I understand you're in the radio dodge. How'd you like to audition the policeman's glee club sometime? Thanks, but if it's all the same no to you... No trouble at all. I'll send him up someday. Of course, you know, I can't leave my horse. Oh, that's too bad. Well, Grandpa, I guess between us we arranged a pretty fine family. All right. They're a bit giddy and mixed up, but you and I, we'll keep our eyes on them, eh? Sure we will. I don't understand it, Janet. All my life I teach a singer. All my life she's a music. I know, Tony. Uh, no. No, you tell me I can't teach a midge no more. Why you say that, Janet? Eh? I'm sorry, Tony. I thought you'd understand. Oh, what's the matter? She, she's a no-sing good for those radio people, eh? It isn't that. She's under contract to them. She's got to do what they say. They? I know it is not you. It is they. They make you do this to me, eh? Try to understand. Francois is only continuing the work you've already done, Tony. Francois? Francois? Who's a Francois? Maybe he's a hero of me, but I never hear of him, eh? Don't feel you've lost her. Midge will come down and see you as often as she can. Hmm? Coming down? Oh, yes, we're moving. Uptown to... Well, to a much bigger place. Oh, I see. Nice, swell house now, huh? That's in a contract, too, yes? Huh? Oh, no, it isn't, Tony, but... Hello, Sis. Sorry I'm late, Tony. How about starting with Santa Lucia today? No, 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 no. No, no, no Santa Lucia. All right. The arpeggio, legato, and staccato. La, 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 No, 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 no. Stop it, stop it, please. Oh, it is, is it as bad as that? It must be because I'm out of breath. Give me another minute. No, and... no, it's, uh... It's, well... It's a no lesson today, Mitch. Oh, I won't be late again, Tony. Honest, I no, won't. No, it's not it. Uh, Tony, well, Tony, he's a teach you everything you know. There's no more left for Tony. What? Oh, no, Tony. That's not so. Sure, sure, it is a so. Sure, it's so. From now on, Tony, he's to take a back seat. Oh, no, you can't. Why, I couldn't do anything without you, Tony. Oh, Janet, Janet, tell him. Now look, Midge, singing on the radio is different, and Mr. Harrington is getting you a special teacher. But I don't want a special teacher. I want Tony. What's the matter with you? It's the best thing in the world for you. It's, uh, it's uh, like going from, uh, from a school to college. Tony, he's a school, and Francois is a college. Francois? Who is he? What? You never hear of Francois. 
<laughs> Why, everybody knows a Francois. He's a, he's a great maestro. You will like him fine, see. And someday, someday he'll make you a great singer. Sure, that's what he do. He make you a, make you a bigger star, Tony. Tony, he's going to do nothing for you. Oh, oh Tony. <laughs> young singer scores hit in radio debut. Mitch Loring, youngest star in the airway. Mitch Loring, this month's Blue Ribbon winner. Mitch Loring takes country by storm. Mitch Loring. Mitch Loring. Mitch Loring. Mitch Loring. And here's a picture, Tony. Midge Loring, radio star, with her sister, Janet Loring, and Eric Montague, well-known man around Manhattan. This, uh, this a fellow around Manhattan. Who's a she? She's a he. All right, all right. Who's a he? I guess he's Janet's gentleman friend. Oh. She's a pretty good-looking fellow, no? No. Hmm. I think I don't like it myself. Gee, I hope Midge ain't got a gentleman friend, too. Hmm? <laughs> no. Well, she ain't been around lately. Well, you see, uh, Midge, Midge, she's a bigger star. Stars cannot visit the earth all the time because, uh, well, because the stars got plenty to do. Got to work hard so she can keep on a shiny. Tony, Tony, where are you? It's Midge. It's a Midge. Hello, Jerry. Oh. Hello. Gee, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> oh, I am glad for to see you. Oh, come on, come on, Mitch, darling. You sit down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How's everything, eh? Hunky dory. The folks sent their love. What's new around here? Oh, everything's the same. Jimmy Buckley bust his tooth. He tried to open a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, you know Mrs. Mitchell? She's a fight with her husband. Each one don't talk to the other one, and <laughs> he's a very happy. <laughs> Listen, I came back to tell you I'm having a big New Year's Eve party Tuesday, and you're all invited. It's at our place. A bigger party at your place? Yes. Will you come? Oh, sure. Oh, that's swell. Well, I gotta go now. I still got a lot of uncles to contact. Goodbye, Tony. Goodbye. goodbye. I'll help you contact them. All right. So long, Tony, and don't forget. New Year's Eve. I want to be there. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Gee, that's a nice hat you got there, Midge. I'm glad you like it. Janet helped me pick it up. You haven't got a new boyfriend, too, have you? Of course not. What do you mean, too? Well, Janet's got one. I seen his picture in the paper. Oh, Ricky? He just sort of hangs around educating the family. You know, walk like this, talk like that, eat like this. Oh, one of those. Yeah, but he's not compatible like Bob. Then what's she doing with him? Well, she just goes out with him when Bob's busy. You know how it is. You sure you haven't got another boyfriend? Why, Jerry, I'm cross my heart, sure. Gee, that's swell. You know what? I got a raise. And the 10th Avenue Delivery Boys Association elected me president. Golly, Jerry, you're really going places. But then I always had a feeling you'd be president. You did? I sure did. Oh, Midge. Oh, gee. Gosh. and mashed potatoes would be all right for Midge's party, don't you, Janet? Oh, but, Mother, we should have something fancy for people like the DeWolves. Maybe Ricky's got a suggestion. Yes, what do you say, Ricky? Well, uh, perhaps tear up in Riviere for the main course, then uh, pate de foie gras with the salad and bomba rum for dessert. I think that would be enough. Wash down with a good vintage wine. Yeah. Hey, what is this terrapin, turkey? No, you dope, it's capon. Hi. Well, Midge, darling. Hello. I've never seen Hello, you. Oh, Midge, dear. I'm just making out the menu for your party New Year's Eve. We're going to have trappin' a la Riviera and... Fine. The... And have some hard-boiled eggs for Uncle Jack and some corned beef for Uncle Pete and some pickled onions for Uncle Walt so they'll have something to eat. Uncle Jack? Uncle Walt? Sure, they're all coming. And we don't need a fancy band for the party. Uncle Sherman and Fiddle will take care of the music. Uncle Sherman? Uh-huh. I, uh, I do not believe I have met these gentlemen. You will. They're all coming in full-dress uniforms. In uniforms? That's right. And you needn't be afraid of meeting them. They're very democratic people. They'd be nice to anybody. See you later, family. I gotta go and practice. Oh, Jenna, these, uh, these uncles. Oh, don't worry about them, Ricky. I don't believe they'll come. As a matter of fact, we'll just have to make sure that they don't. <laughs> Hey, Midge, hurry it up. We're on the air in two minutes. Hello, Bob. Hello, Connie. Hiya, Midge. Shake it up, honey. How do you like my dress? Oh, swell. Great. I got a special for the party tonight. Don't forget, you're coming home with me, both of you. Oh, uh, the party. Well, I, I'm sorry, Midge, but it looks as if Cotton and I won't be able to go. You see, uh, well, you remember Cotton. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Well, anyway, we can't come, Midge. Oh, but you can't not come. You gotta come. Everybody's expecting you. Well, yes, but... Uh... What's the matter, Bob? You never come around the house anymore? Are you mad at someone? No, it's just that... Ten uh... seconds, Bob. Okay. You ready, Midge? Yes, but you better be waiting for me after that broadcast or Grandpa will take his cane to you. Okay, okay. Now watch it. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like you to meet Miss Midge Loring. Are you sure we're expected at this party? Yeah, how's about it? Oh, don't be silly. Come on. <laughs> Boy, what a mob. Hand your derby to the butler, Cotton. We're getting high class around here. Hello, darling. Happy New Year. Oh, Happy New Year, Janet. Well, hello, Janet. Long time no see. Why, Bob, this is a pleasant surprise. Surprise? Hey, Midge, what goes? Hello, Cotton. Happy New Year. Oh, thanks. Come on in and meet everybody. Wait a minute. Janet... Where is everybody? Why, everybody's here, dear. Well, greetings, my little nightingale. How's it, kid? Hello, Uncle Dan. Say, where's Uncle Pat and Uncle Sherm? Happy New Year, Midge. Hello, Mom. Where's Tony and Uncle Ed and everybody? Why didn't they come? Well, Midge, quite a gathering you've got here, eh? Hello, Grandpa. Have you seen Uncle Pete and Sherm and Tony and everybody? Not yet. Well, what's the matter? Don't ask me. Midge, dear, they're not coming. Not coming. Why not? Uh, well, you, you see, Janet told them that... Uh, to that told them what? I told them this was a, wasn't exactly a family party and that we... Not a family party? Oh, but Janet, this is New Year's. How can I have a New Year's party without my uncle? But darlings, we're having a lovely party. Oh, everyone's having a swell time. You see, darling, we'd already invited these other people. Oh, so there's no room for the family, eh? I didn't mean that. I told them we'd have them some other time. Some other time. And I rigged myself up on a stiff collar for this. I'm going up and go to bed. So am I. Good night, everybody. Midge, dear. Now, wait, Midge. Hey, Bob, what do you say? Yeah, let's go to some nice low-class joint. Too many stuffed shirts around here. We don't fit in. Good night, Janet. Is that supposed to break my heart? Look at her, Cotton. Same eyes, same nose, same face. But it just isn't the same girl. If that's your idea of being funny... My idea is that it's just too bad that Midge's uncles can't come to her own party. And my idea is that it's just too bad you can't mind your own business. And my idea is to get out before blood is drawn. Well, what are you waiting for? Haven't you said enough? No. For the love of Jezebel, if anybody'd ever told me that you would go high hat... Have I... you finished? Yeah, that's all I have to say to you, now or ever. That just suits me fine. Well, I'm glad you're pleased. I'm delighted. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Midge. Gone to bed? Yes. Everybody left? All gone. I I was wondering if you'd seen my glasses. I've mislaid them somewhere. You've got them on. Huh? Oh, <laughs> I lose my head one day. <laughs> Come now, lass. Crying never cured anything. Grandpa, what's happened to everybody? I don't know. They've just changed. Golly. Maybe I've changed, too. Not you, honey. Never. Then what's the matter with them all? Well, so long as they were struggling along, they were satisfied with very little. They had their work to do, some of them, and that kept them busy. 
Then you went on the radio and the money began to roll in. Does money change people? Not always. Sometimes it depends how you use it. But sometimes it makes people sort of lose their bearings. You mean we're not like that man out in the field anymore? We've got too many shirts? Aye, that's what's the matter. Then, Grandpa, you've got to do something. You've just got to. Uh, it's got me stumped. Oh, but, Grandpa, we just can't give up. When you're my age, you'll find out you can't change human nature. Oh, that's pretty tough, huh? Yeah, pretty tough. Grandpa, what if I'd never learned to sing? What if I'd never gone on the radio and made a lot of money? What if, what if I lost my voice all of a sudden? Well, I suppose we'd be back where we were. And a lot happier. Uh-huh. What'd you say? Oh, oh nothing, just uh-huh. <laughs> the curtain falls on Act Two of A Little Bit of Heaven, starring Gloria Jean, C. Aubrey Smith, Helen Parrish and Frank Albertson. During this brief intermission before Mr. DeMille presents Act Three, we bring you another of our real-life stories. Mrs. L. Blythe of Toronto, Canada, has written us a delightful story about a New Year's party she gave last year. With her young daughter, she was going over last-minute plans. I think that takes care of everything. Oh, Mother, there's one more thing. You've just got to have a new dress for the party. I certainly need one, but... We simply can't afford it. Oh, Mums, please. You'd look so scrumptious. But, honey... Oh, I... Won't you look for one anyway? Well, I'll try. Maybe I'll run into a bargain. I didn't have much hope I'd find anything, but I did go shopping. And I found a $15 dress marked down to almost nothing because it was terribly soiled. The dress was so pretty and such a bargain, I decided to get it and try washing it in Lux Flakes. And I'm glad I did because it turned out beautifully. When my party broke up on New Year's... Oh, Millie, darling, it's been a lovely party and you look divine. You certainly do. That's a stunning dress. Oh, Millie always looks oh. smart. Oh, thank you so much, all of you. Well, naturally, that made me very happy. Just think, I had a lovely new dress and I saved many dollars, thanks to Lux Flakes. Yes, New Quick Lux does save money. It helps you keep all your washable dresses smart looking longer. It's safe for anything safe in water alone. It has none of the harmful alkali found in many ordinary soaps. It's fast and it's thrifty too. A little goes so far. About a penny's worth of Lux Flakes will freshen a dress, leaving it immaculately dainty, just as you like all your things to be. Keep the generous big box of New Quick Lux handy and you'll keep your clothes budget down. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on the third act of A Little Bit of Heaven. The fertile brain of little Midge Loring is hard at work on the problem of changing human nature. At the studio, a few hours before the broadcast, there's a rehearsal in progress. The musical conductor nods at Midge for her cue. Midge clears her throat, opens her mouth, and hits the first note. What's the matter, Midge? I don't know. Try that note again, please. That's funny. Nothing comes out. Maybe you swallowed your chewing gum. I didn't have any chewing gum. Still nothing comes out. Miss Loring, such things do not happen to a pupil of Francois. Come on, Mitch. We don't want to spend all day on this. Well, maybe we'd better call the whole thing off. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Come on. Miss Loring, look at me. Say to yourself, I am a pupil of Francois. Then let yourself go. Float on the wings of song. But I don't feel floaty. I feel sinking. Nonsense. Sing. Wait a minute. This is serious. Open your mouth and say, ah. Ah. Let me see. Ah. 
I see nothing at all. Nothing at all. Listen, you take your head out of her mouth and sit down. Nobody tell France what to sit down. My dear Miss Loring, let me remind you we have impending a most important concert at Philharmonic Hall. That's right. Now make her nervous. Oh, I'm not nervous. It's just that nothing comes out. Enough of nothing. This concert is your great opportunity. You will discipline yourself. You will discontinue your behavior. You will proceed with the rehearsal. You will sing. Don't you understand? I can't sing. That's what's the matter with me. I just can't sing. Something bust inside of me. In here. That's what's the matter with me. I've lost my voice. Don't you see? I've lost my voice. <laughs> Just keep that ice bag around your throat, darling. What happened, Midge? Nothing happened. I just lost my voice. All of a sudden, nothing came out. What did the doctor say to you? He said, he said I larynxed my tonsils. <gasps> nothing like this ever happened in our family before. Just keep her in bed, that's all. I think she ought to gargle with honey. What she needs is a good home remedy, like goose grease or pork. Yeah, what was it that Ed used when he lost his voice from roaring at the lion? Oh, something Grandma whipped up. I'll suppose you all go and find out what it was. I'll stay here with Mid. Well, she'd better be kept quiet. Don't let her take that ice bag off. Yeah, and be sure to hold your feet up high. Be sure she keeps covered up. All right, all right. I know when to come in out of the rain. Go on. Well, young lady. Well, Grandpa. So you lost your voice, eh? Yes, sir. That's what it did. Oh, you can cut out all that stuff now. You know, you're not supposed to tell fibs. I know, but somebody had to do something. So you larynxed your tonsils, eh? Uh-huh. It's a bad case. <laughs> <laughs> but, Grandpa, do you figure it'll be safe for me to get my voice back in time for the concert? Because I got to sing at that concert. I guess you can have it back by then, sure. Grandpa, you know what? What? It's going to be tough eating milk toast all the time. Ah, well, later on I'll sneak you a hamburger. Oh, you will? With onions. Oh, eh? Grandpa! <laughs> oh, boy! <laughs> But listen, Mr. Harrington. Hello. 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 Mr. Harrington, you can't do that to us. Hello. Ah. Ah, he hung up. What'd he say? He canceled Midget's contract. Cancel the contract? This is a fine mess. Now I've got to cancel all those dresses. What are we going to do? Well, I think we Brad, should... what we've got to do is get down to business and figure out an angle on Harrington. Well, if you're asking me, Nobody's I... asking you. You didn't even have nerve enough to talk back to him. The point is, what do we do now? Well, we got along without Harrington before. We'll get along without Harrington again. Oh, that's a lot of hooey. Oh, a lot of hooey, is it? Well, let me tell you one thing. From now on, there's going to be a change around here. In the first place, you're going to find yourself a job. What? You heard me. Okay, okay, take it easy. And you heard me too, Janet. Back to the grindstone for you too. All right, Pop, all right. Well, what will I do, Pop? You're going in the kitchen and get us something decent to eat. And never mind that fancy trapin a la caper, neither. Yes, uh, what would you like, Pop? Stew. It's Monday, isn't it? Janet, go and answer the door. Sure, Pop. If that butler beats you to it, tell him he's fired. We're going to get back to normal around here. Okay, Pop, okay. Hello, Janet. Oh, Ricky, I'd forgotten all about you. Well, that is very complimentary. Have you also forgotten that the DeWolfs are expecting us? Oh, I'm afraid I won't have any time for the DeWolfs or the Newberries anymore. What? No, you see, beginning tomorrow, I'm going to be very busy looking for a job. Goodbye. <laughs> And I had to make believe I lost my voice. And I lost my chance to sing at the concert, too. They're going to get Madame Lipitsky. Oh, Midge, don't cry. Please, don't cry. Here, have some nice spaghetti, eh? No, thanks, Tony. I never thought that somebody else would sing in place of me at that concert. Oh, that Lipitsky, she's not a somebody. She's a cow. She looks like a cow. She sings like a cow. Tony knows. He's a hearer. Mo, 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 mo. Ah. If I don't sing at that concert, Tony, I'll just die. Oh, me, it's you not to talk like that. Nobody can do this to Tony's a pupil. Well, they're doing it. You, Grandpa, why he's going to take his cane and make a swoosh at Mr. Herring, eh? Pop's got the cane now. Mr. Harrington won't even talk to him. He won't even yell at him. He just won't let me sing. Well, hell, somebody's got to see Mr. Herring. Somebody's got to tell him he's making a fool of himself. Somebody's got... Uh, he! What? Somebody! That's me! <laughs> No! Yes, no! 
Yes. No. Yes, Midge is going to sing tonight. No, no, no. I told that lunatic family I was through with them. Now get out. And I'm telling you, you can't do this. Midge is going to sing tonight. Don't you tell me what I'm going to do. Out of this office. That cow Lupitsky is not going to sing tonight. You lunkheaded spaghetti whirler. I don't care whether she's a cow or whether she's a horned toad. Lupitsky sings. Lupitsky, the cow, sings tonight. You mustn't get mad. You too fat. But the meat is going to sing tonight. Over my dead body. That's a good idea, but you got to hurry up because the meat is going to sing tonight. And I say Lupitsky sings for the last time. She's a don't even sing for the first time or she's in a jail. Listen, she's going to say... Huh? In the jail or she's arrested. Lupitsky? Who arrested her? Uncle Jack. He's a cop. How you like that? Listen, you can't get away with that. I'll get on this phone and have her out of there in five minutes. Oh, you think so, huh? First, you've got to speak to Uncle Pete. He's a prison guard, and he speaks to nobody. Get out of my way. I'll go down to that jail. No, please, you don't leave her from this office. Who says so? Leo, you say so. Who's Leo? Hey, Uncle Ed, bring in a Leo. Hiya, Mr. Harrington. Help! 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 You see? Mitch is going to sing tonight. <laughs> Hey, Bob, the audience is getting restless. Where's that Madame Lupitsky? How should I know? Well, you better go out and make an announcement. Yeah, Kaylee's last stand. Come on, Midge, hurry, hurry. Hey, what in the... Hello, Bob, hello, Cotton. Is it time for me to sing? Oh, but your voice, what... I think you'll find her voice is all right, son. She's cured, and so is the family. Me especially, Bob. Janet. Yeah, Bob, honest. She's compatible like anything. Oh, Janet, that's great. What about, uh, I mean, maybe we could, uh, well, you and I... All right, I... Bob, right after the concert. Oh, swell. Bob, the announcement. Oh, oh, excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I regret to announce to you that, owing to a most unexpected complication, Madame Lupitsky will be unable to sing for you tonight. It is, however, with the greatest of pleasure that I present to you the beloved favorite, Miss Midge Loring. <laughs> If I was only a swallow Over the hills and the hollow I would have fly to a summer is If I were only a swallow Hop, hop, hollow While through the heavens I'm winging I could be joyfully singing If I were only a swallow Now, alas, just a maid am I. Not a bird, so I cannot fly. Oh, <laughs> life has So we reached the end of our play. Gloria Jean, C. Aubrey Smith, Helen Parrish, and Frank Albertson will be back for a curtain call in just a moment. Meanwhile, let's listen in on a party. Dora and John have asked some friends in for an evening of bridge. The game has been going on for some time now, and uh, so has Dora. And I was saying to John just the other night, you know, what, dear? Take my hand off the table so we can start the bidding. Oh, John, I wish you wouldn't call attention to my hands like that. I... Oh, you mean the cards. Oh, I see, yes. Well, why don't you bid if you're in such a hurry? Oh, you're waiting for me to bid. But, dear, you know I always pass the first time. Why, John, hold my hand so you can't see it. Oh, now, really, I know my hands are all red and chapped, but that's because I wash dishes every day. And after all, they're your dishes I wash, and I don't see why you have to be so mean about it. Oh... Oh, you mean hold my cards so you can't see them. Well, it wouldn't help if you did see them. I I've had awful hands all evening. I never have any luck. Uh, what did you say, Kitty? No, I haven't any lucks either. But what in the world made you say that? Well, no wonder Dora is self-conscious about her red, rough hands. Kitty put her finger on the reason. Dora hasn't yet discovered new quick lux flakes for dishes. 
Now, if you, like Dora, have trouble keeping your hands nice because of dishwashing, why not try these gentle, speedy, thrifty flakes for your dishes? Lux is so kind to your hands. Hundreds of dramatic one-hand tests have proved this. Tests of five soaps widely used for dishes, made under conditions similar to home dishwashing. Lux left hands soft, smooth, and lovely. The other soaps made them red and rough. Now, why not prove this for yourself? Change from harsh soaps to new quick Lux. You'll be amazed at the way your hands stay pretty in spite of dishwashing. Get the big box of Lux Flakes. It's extra thrifty. Now, Mr. DeMille is bringing our stars to the microphone. The genial quartet of our play is back at the microphone. Gloria Jean, C. Aubrey Smith, Helen Parrish, and Frank Albertson. And if we could all sing as gloriously as Gloria, this would be some quartet. Thanks, Mr. Smith. And if everybody had a grandpa like you, everybody would have a swell time. Say, that's quite a mutual admiration society you have there. Yeah, where did it all start? In our first picture together. We're old buddies, Mr. Smith and me. Huh? Gloria, Mr. Smith and I. Oh, yes, sir, I'm sorry. I'll have to remember that. <laughs> In exchange for those grandma lessons, Gloria... Maybe you should give Grandpa Smith some singing lessons. I did ask him to sing a duet once. What did he say? He said I was 50 years too late. That's awful late, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't want to wait that long on the corner. Well, C.B., we've all had a great time here this week. What have you got on the fire for next Monday? Three solid acts of thrills and romance, Aubrey. Our adaptation of the RKO screen hit, Vivacious Lady. And it's a very exciting comedy. Who's in the cast, Mr. DeMille? We're going to have Alice Fay and Donna Michi. Both in great parts. You'll hear Don Amici as a young college professor and Alice Fay as the nightclub singer he marries. That marriage comes as quite a shock to the college, but it will bring us a lot of fun next Monday night. Well, Vivacious Lady was great on the screen, Mr. DeMille. I think it'll be a hit here next week. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year, CB. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. And I, I know you'll all have a happy one. Tomorrow is the tag of the old year, the day we put the final entry in the ledger of 1940 and strike a balance for better, for worse. It's essentially a day for looking back, but ever since man began to mark off days on a calendar, New Year's Day has been one for looking ahead. And on this New Year's Day, all true Americans are facing the future as one united people with a confidence that makes them sure a courage that makes them strong, and a faith that makes them great. So I give you a New Year's toast to America. God bless her. And a happy New Year to all her sons and daughters. A year of health, prosperity, good fellowship, and strength. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Donna Michi and Alice Fay in Vivacious Lady. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you till 1941 from Hollywood. Gloria Jean is currently being seen in the universal picture, A Little Bit of Heaven. C. Aubrey Smith will soon be seen in metro Golden mayors Maisie Was a Lady. Helen Parrish's forthcoming picture is Six Lessons from Madame Lazonga at Universal. Frank Elton will appear in the universal picture, The Mysterious Dr. R. Heard in tonight's play were Lou Merrill as Tony, Arthur Q. Bryan as Harrington, Verna Felton as Mom, Charles Seal as Pop, Alan Wood as Dan, Edwin Max as Cotton, Tristram Coffin as Ricky, Hobby Winkler as Jerry, Stanley Farrar as orchestra conductor, Ralph Sedan as Francois, Warren Ash as Uncle Ed, and Dwayne Thompson as Mrs. Mitchell. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. <laughs> it's the Columbia Broadcasting System.
To whoever this may impact, sometimes our lives have to be completely shaken up, changed, and rearranged to relocate is where we're really meant to be. Sometimes change feels like loss, transformation is scary, and sometimes to discover the best version of ourselves, we must let go of absolutely everything holding us down. Welcome to I Missed Me, your new safe space. I Missed Me's purpose is to help people all around the world to come back home to themselves. It is a healing self-growth podcast that encourages people to dive deep into their emotions, heal their traumas, and ultimately love themselves. My name is Mafia Sures, I am your host, and I hope to be a part of your healing journey.